Here is a helpful video that for the most part will be self-explanatory. We are going to take two pieces of wood and use them to create a variety of different angles. And in some of these examples, we will use different sized lumber to join the two pieces together. And these methods can be used to figure out the angles for cove molding, base molding, and other molding once you have it figured out. And you can position these boards in a few different directions. We are going to work with this method here in this video, where we have two pieces of one by six to join together. So let's go ahead and grab our pencils because we are going to be marking the top. And you can simply just make a small mark here. You don't need to make a mark all the way across. And we are going to make a small mark on the bottom. And then when we remove this piece of lumber, you can actually see where we are going to draw our line and simply connect the points. Not connect the dots, but we will be connecting the point, a line from this point here to this point down here. And and then once we have that line, we can cut it and then use this piece to mark the next board. Or believe it or not, this is actually going to be the same angle. I could take this board right here and reposition it over here to make it look like we know what we're doing. And another thing you could do would be to simply pull this board away a little bit if this one here was square at the edge. Just make sure that both of the boards are parallel to a wall or flat surface. Because if I just simply stuck this up here and pushed this board over, I could end up with a small imperfection in this particular cut. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at two different lumber sizes where we will be using a one by six, five and a half inches tall, and a one by four that is three and a half inches tall. And we're simply going to do the same thing. We're going to mark each point. We're going to mark the bottom and we are going to mark the top in the same way we did previously and basically do the same exact thing to create a miter joint that will work for both of these boards. And again, this example shouldn't require much more instructions to make it work. And again, make you look like a professional wood trim carpenter. And you could reverse this too. If you needed a one by four down here and a one by six up here, again, you're gonna be able to get the same miter. And if I needed to reverse things and have a one by four down here and a one by six up here, you're gonna be able to do it. And I'm guessing that you're going to have the same angle because if I took these two boards and rotated them 180 degrees, I would probably end up with the same angle, except it would be reversed. Next up, let's go ahead and make a different cut here. We are going to come straight up, vertically plumb, draw a line, and then shape this board here to end up with something like this. Now, keep in mind that both of these boards are the same size. And the miter we had before came from here to about here. However, that's not going to be the case with this cut unless this is the look that we want. And one way to make this work will be to install a larger board here or a smaller board over here. Or should I say you're going to need a smaller board in width over here and a taller board in width on this side. Or we can reshape the top of the board if we want to use the same boards with the same width to provide this effect here. Another type of detail would be to leave this one square and then mark this board over here. And you could always put a straight edge on top so that you can make your mark here. And of course, since this is square, you're going to be able to make a mark right here so that you can cut the board and end up with this type of detail right here. So again, another design. And for those of you wondering just why in the heck I'm showing you this, it's because you might need a easy way to figure out the angle cuts if you're going to be installing a skirt board with some type of flat trim or similar trim along with different or the same sizes. And you can see here where all you need to do is move this to the left or to the right until it gets into the position you want so that you can mark the angle that you will be using for this cut. 
so that you can finish trimming out this particular section of your stairway. And don't forget that this angle here is the same as the angle above. And to find it, you will need to use one of the methods I've shown you in the video to calculate the exact angle with the simplest method I could possibly think of without using any complicated math formulas that might have seemed difficult to make before watching this video.